he's he's good to go. He's our game one starter. Um, you know, um, I think everything everything works out you know for a reason, and you know game game five happened, and he gets a few more off days so he can take care of his uh, belly button, and uh, he'll be ready to go. I, I stay away from it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's ready to go. Uh, excited to 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 pitch game one. He's been, you know, our guy since day one. Obviously, the other guys did an outstanding job. But uh, him pitching that game, you know, it's just something we we map it out through September. This was the plan all along, and uh, happy that he's going to be able to to go out there and perform. Hey Alex, um, what do you remember? What do you recall about playing with uh, Dave Roberts in 2002, and, and I guess in general your time with the Dodgers? I remember a lot, but I still remember in '04 when he got traded. We were in San Diego at that time. We had the best team in the National League West, and uh, he got called into the office by Jim Tracy. And they told him he got traded to the to the Red Sox. He was he was down, upset. Uh, it was a good group. We felt that we had something special going on. And I still remember I, I told him, "Hey man, you go into a great baseball city. You never know what can happen. So uh, just enjoy the ride." Um, he came here. He stole that base, I, I, and that night I, I text him. I, I was like, right after he stole second base, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen here, but if this happens, you're going to become a hero. And, and, and he is here in this city. Great guy, great family guy, a friend of mine. I've been pulling for him for a while. He's done an outstanding job with an outstanding organization, and uh, I'm very proud that he... He's uh, he's here in the World Series. Alex, you all you you and players always talk about chasing a ring. What do you do with yours? <laughs> <laughs> um, the the 07 one, Camila has it. <clears throat> Last year is somewhere in my apartment. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm more about memories and 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 the journey and the conversations and and. Uh, just, just, just the experience. Uh, I'm not a big uh, watch or rings or necklaces uh, guy. I'm very simple, and uh, that's what I, I remember. Um, I got a closet here with uh, like Astros jerseys and, and towels and all that. Sometimes I mess around with Nooney and, and Boogie, call them into the office and show them. You know, like, hey, look, look, look what happened last year. But uh, besides that, I don't. You know, I. I Obviously, you know, 07 was special. Last year was special. But uh, I think this year, uh, if we can win four more, then that'll be, like, the best out of the three. Alex, ¿qué nos puedes decir poder participar ahora en una serie mundial, esta vez como manager? También, ¿qué nos puedes decir de los Dodgers? La organización de los Dodgers significa mucho para mí. Eh, me draftearon en 1996 y... y me dieron la oportunidad de, de ser pelotero profesional y, y, y llegar a las Grandes Ligas. Eh, aprecio mucho esa ciudad, Dodger Stadium, Mr. Scully, Jaime Jarrín, todas esas personas son personas muy importantes en mi vida. Eh, en cuanto a llegar a la Serie Mundial como dirigente, es sumamente diferente que como jugador y, y, y coach de la banca. Eh, es un momento sumamente especial, bien gratificante y... Y poder liderar a estos muchachos lo hace, lo hace mucho mejor. Es un grupo de tremendo, eh, humilde, trabajador y con mucha hambre. Y loco que llegue el martes para que comience esto. You obviously faced the Dodgers in the World Series last year, too. Uh, just your thoughts on what, what makes them so tough and you know, just your overall thoughts on this matchup coming up. Um, they do a good job mixing and matching. Um, they, they, they got two different lineups against lefties, against righties. Um, the rotation is, is pretty solid. They got a great closer. Um, they they do a lot of things, running the bases and all that. Um, it's, it's, 
it's, it's a tough team, um, relentless. They um, they got a few guys there. You know, JT has been amazing at third base and in the clubhouse. Um, Chase, I know he's not active. I don't know what's going to happen in the World Series, but he's one of them leaders, and he he's he's great in the clubhouse for those guys. Um, Manny Machado is back. Uh, we're going to see him again. It's a complete team. They play with energy, too. Um, Dodger Stadium will be loud, and the weather will be great. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it should be a great World Series. How are you going to line up uh, pitching-wise after Chris uh, gave one? Uh, we'll talk about it today. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between playing in L.A. and playing in Boston? <laughs> um, the weather, uh, traffic, um, I don't know, it's, it's, I enjoy playing in LA, that was, that was great, they gave me a chance to, to, to be a professional baseball player and then to become a big leaguer. Um, we went from, uh, from an okay team to getting this closer that, you know, he kept the fans. Instead of leaving in the seventh inning, they stayed all the way through the ninth inning because they wanted to see Eric pitch in, in 03 and in 04. Um, I don't know. Uh, at that time, I didn't pay too much attention about um, media and, and the fans. I, I was just happy that I was in the big leagues and being able to perform. Um, last year, um, that, that place was, was loud, very loud. And I think that was the difference between now and, and when I play there. Um, I don't want to say they were laid back, the fans, because then when I get there, I, it might hunt me. But uh, last year, that was that was a fun atmosphere. Uh, game one and two, and then game six and seven, that was that was great. So um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a great sports town, just like here. Um, Thursday, the Lakers play at night, so whoever Want to invite me to see the Lakers? That'll be great. The off day. Um, you know, it, it's it's very similar here, but it's, it's a bigger city. Uh, this is, uh, you know, you got the the Patriots and the Celtics and us and the Revolution and everything. You know, and it's it's small over there. They got their college teams and the Lakers and the Clippers and all this stuff, but it's it's so spread out that sometimes, well, you know, it's not as as the madness that I, we live here. That's that's probably the difference. Alex, uh, how much have you paid attention to their resiliency? Ian mentioned it a little while ago, but the fact they were down 0-1 and 1-2 to the Brewers and came back, and how much do you think that last year, their run last year to the World Series and Game 7 factors into that? No, they. I, I lived it firsthand last year. Uh, that Game 5 was crazy. They, they were they were up, they were down, they were up again, I think. I don't know, whatever. And then game six happened, and they beat the Houston Astros. And then game seven, the Astros ended, ended up winning. So I saw it firsthand. They, they, don't, they don't stop playing. And when you get to this level, you know, when, when you are the last two teams standing, you, you, from pitch one all the way to the last pitch of the, of the game, you're gonna keep pushing and, and and putting good at bats and executing pitches and playing good defense. So um, we expect them. Uh, we expect that out of them. They're gonna play a uh, whole game. Um, they were behind. They were, you know, throughout the season. They were what ten games back or something like that, with a lot of good teams ahead of them. And I still remember uh, Dr. saying something like, "We will win the West." At one point, and they were like ten games back, and I read it. I was like, "Dr. is crazy," but uh, that's who he is. He's very positive. He has a great pulse of that clubhouse and and the and the team, um, their ownership group, and and the front office. They they do everything possible to to get better, not only on the field but off the field. Everybody knows about their analytic team and all all the money they spend in that area, uh, they're, they're prepared. They will be prepared, and uh, it's going to be a, a, a challenge for us. 
Alex, I know you guys were waiting until the last minute last night to find out which team you would actually play. Now, knowing it's the Dodgers and they had a seven-game series here against the Brewers, is that any advantage to you guys that you've had a little bit of extra time and to kind of see it unfold as opposed to them sort of jumping right in on Tuesday night? Um, I don't know. I, I Sometimes, uh, you know, like, like in 07, the Rockies had, what, 10, 10 games in between, 10 days in between the World Series and – we had to fight all the way till the end against the Indians, and and then that happened. Um, one thing for sure, we we will we will be prepared. Uh, I think that the off days will benefit us physically, uh, especially in the bullpen. So that rest is going to help him out. I don't think Dave is complaining. You know, he they're here. Uh, they knew that it was going to be a tough series against the Brewers. They they had to play. 163 to win the division and all that stuff. So I think at this at this time it really doesn't matter how you get here. Um, and, you know, they they they'll be ready for Tuesday. We will too, and uh, let's see what happens. Alex, during the season, uh, you had there were times where you had as many as four lefties in your rotation. Uh, they could do that too with Kershaw, Hill, Wood, Ryu. Uh, how unusual is it to have two teams in the World Series so lefty heavy uh, with their pitching staff? And what does that do, do you think, to matchups throughout the series where obviously um, you know, you're know you both both teams mix and match and have some platoon positions? Um, very unusual. Um, around the league, you think about staffs, it, it's always either four righties and one lefty Three righties, two lefties, but nothing like this. So, um, you know, what's that saying? You know, if you're lefty and you have a heartbeat, you got a chance to put, pitch in the big leagues. But these lefties are special, all of them. And uh, it's going to be a challenge. Um, there's some of them that um, they're tough on lefties. There's others that they're tough and, tougher on righties. So there's going to be a lot of meetings, a lot of thinking, and... Uh, Mixing and matching, uh, it doesn't mean, it, you know, it doesn't mean that because they're throwing all the lefties, our lefties are not going to play. Same way with them. Um, it'll be interesting, but uh, at the same time, they got righties in the bullpen. We do the same thing, so uh, it, it'll be fun to mix and match with them. Um, I hate managing the other team, but uh, at this time, you, you have to think about it. And you have the three games or two games at least uh, in the National League. So that that makes it more interesting. But uh, like I said, we'll, we'll go with our best lineup regardless of who's on the mound, lefty, righty. Um, you know, we can have platoon advantage, advantages or not, depending on who's on the mound. But like I said, we, we're very comfortable with whoever is out there. We will we feel that we can score runs against anybody. Alex, algún comentario que no pueda hacer del macheo de estos dos equipos, cómo los comparas y me gustaría que también comentes sobre Kike Hernández. Me parece que es lo más similar a, a Alex Bregman en Houston, ¿no? Porque es el alma del equipo en, en, en el clubhouse. <laughs> bueno, Kike eh, es tremendo, Enrique es tremendo pelotero, eh, bastante versátil. Ha hecho un trabajo excelente jugando segunda, jugando en el outfield y haciendo todo lo posible por, por no solamente jugar buena defensa, sino ofensivamente hablando fue tremendo año para él. En cuanto a los equipos, son, somos bastante parecidos en cuestión de la rotación. Muchos zurdos que van a lanzar en esta temporada, en esta, en esta serie. Y después cuando vamos al bullpen son muchos derechos. Eh, somos bastante dinámicos en la ofensiva. Podemos marchar con la posición con cualquier jugador con sus dos derechos, así que debe ser tremenda serie y bien interesante en cuanto a, a las estrategias. How much has your view of how to use postseason bullpens changed just in the last few years, starting with the way Madden and Tito used it two years ago and then watching last year evolve and this year? And when you're watching as a fan at home, do you think it's more or less interesting the game the way it's being played now in the postseason? It's more interesting. It is. Um, just there's so much information now that you can actually 
exploit weaknesses on the team, not only relying on starters or your usual setup guy or or your closer. Um, somebody, are, you know, the last few years figure out that there's a lot of off days in the playoffs that you can actually use your starters as, as relievers or you can go with the relievers for multiple innings. And it, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, as a as a as a baseball fan, you know, I forget the manager thing, but just watching Rick Porcello come in in the eighth and throw four seamers and curveballs and the emotion he showed that was that was fun to watch, and then to see Nate throwing 102 against Bregman, that was cool, you know, and uh, I know the fans they they love that, and you only have 25 guys, you know, you go from 35 in September and you're using everybody. And all of a sudden, oh, I only have 25, and we have to maximize uh, the roster. And I think that's the only way you can do it. Um, and these guys, they, they work so hard throughout the season. And in the situation we were in, we were able to slow them down in September, thinking, and, thinking about October. And uh, that's why Rick is able to do the things that he's doing, uh, Chris and David and, 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 and Nate, Barnes, all those guys, because we had a good plan coming into October because of uh, the lead. We were able to rest them, and now you can see, you know, you can see them perform at a high level when it when it matters. Do you still think you're something watching? No. Uh, two questions. Uh, first, you said that this one would be more special than 07 or 17. Why? Because I'm the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how different how different does that feel, like in terms of relative to being bench coach or you know being a? Well, well I was uh, a utility guy, yeah, and I was the bench coach, and now I'm the manager. <laughs> Very simple, Alex. There's, I mean, there's no no much explanation there. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, secondly, um, where are you guys in terms of game planning for the Dodgers? How at what you know was there a point during the you know maybe. You know, a after you guys beat Houston, where you were like, okay, let's focus on one of these teams, or how have you approached this? Um, I mean, first time I watched back-to-back uh, -back games in the National League in a while, but uh, and we had our guys following both teams for a while um, since the beginning of the playoffs. So we'll meet today after the workout, start going over them. Tomorrow we'll have at our advanced meeting. Uh, with all the coaches and then with the players. And then uh, if there's something that we see on film or video or, or getting information from, from scouts, then we add it up on, on, on Tuesday and we're, we'll be ready. But um, I think we have plenty of, uh, plenty of information. Um, just like in the previous series, CB had a lot of saying about uh, the pitching staff of the Astros. And we got our our hitting coach. He's very familiar with 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 the Dodgers, so we'll we'll take advantage of that. And um, you know, I, I had a pretty good idea about them too, for what they did last year in the World Series. And obviously, you know, our scouts they they have a huge input of what we're gonna do. Yeah. Just yesterday, you said that you were gonna be talking to Stephen Wright to sort of see where he was at. Do yeah. you get a chance to talk with him, or? He's gonna throw a simulated game today. Um, probably do some PFPs, and uh, we'll see how he reacts tomorrow. And you know, we we still got till Tuesday to make decisions. So uh, he he put himself in this conversation now. So he he needs to show us that he he's he's healthy, and not only today, but <laughs> see how he reacts tomorrow. Uh, Alex, you, you've kind of talked a little bit about it, but having played for both, just a, a thought on the, the history, the tradition, the ballparks uh, of these two teams. Um, I said last year was 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 kind of perfect for for the Houston Astros um, to clinch at Fenway Park, to beat the Yankees, and then to win the World Series at Dodger Stadium. That that's that was pretty cool. You know, um, just think about all this. Scenarios, you know, all those ballparks and the franchises. That was that was cool. Um, this year, we're in the same path, you know, Yankee Stadium. 
from uh, the new Yankee Stadium. Uh, you know, the world champs, and and then playing the Dodgers. That that's. that's um, I mean, there's a lot of history in between these two franchises. Um, like I said before, you know, th it's a special organization for for me and my family. They gave me a shot to 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 play at the big league level. Um, you know, that's uh, where I saw my daughter growing up, you know, through Pasadena and Burbank and Glendale. Uh, although she doesn't remember that, but uh, yeah, it was cool to have, you know, all those places. Mr. Scully, he means a lot to me. Um, Jaime Harrin, you know, he, he actually called me yesterday before the game. And like looking forward to see you this week, I said, well, good luck. And now he'll be here. And to manage against Dave um, is going to be special. Uh, he. He really cares. Um, he's very passionate, and, and you know, nobody thought that he was going to be the guy a few years ago. And since he's been there, you know, they they have dominated that division. And uh, you can see the passion, the emotion. Um, you know, it'll be it'll be great. It's going to be great. Dodger Stadium. You know, there's going to be what 55,000 people there. Um, Although it's a little bit different than when I play there, but uh, it's still a, a special place. It's, uh, it's a fun place to play. I'm looking forward to, to, to be back over there. Uh, Alex, just based on what you guys just went through in the Houston series with the pitching staff and having to extend some guys in the bullpen, do you feel like an 11 pitchers are enough for the World Series, or, or are you inclined to maybe add one more? No, it's, with us, it's not about... The pitching staff is what we do offensively, and and how aggressive we are in in the, in the catcher spot. So um, most likely we'll stay the same. We still have to talk about it, and we're going to talk about it tonight um, after the workout uh, with Dave and and the front office and the analytical staff. But uh, most likely it'll be kind of like the same roster as far as like eleven pitchers. Alex, um, in terms of Mookie maybe playing second base, is the fact that there aren't as many conventional double plays with the shifting have any kind of role in it that he might be less likely to, you know, be in harm's way or anything? Um, maybe, you know. Um, the thing is that in the National League, they bunt, you know, and then they advance runners, and we we gotta we gotta talk about all this stuff, you know. Today he's gonna turn a few little plays, but. Like I said, there's a chance, but it's not like he will, you know. Uh, but we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared. If one day I, I feel like, yeah, that makes sense, we'll do it. But uh, we we got some capable capable guys to play second, and uh, we got some matchups that we have to take a look at. Uh, and uh, but I, we we don't we don't throw too many ground balls. It's either strikeouts or fly balls. So that that. In that, in that, in that sense, well, uh, that's something we'll take into consideration. I also wanted to ask, um, how do you think Devers has responded to, you know, not being in the lineup every day sometimes, kind of having to earn his playing time, and it seems like he's kind of bounced back over the last ten days or so. Uh, he he bounced back when he came back from his uh, rehab assignment. We've been talking about it. Um, offensively, he's been able to slow the game down. He's not chasing pitches up in the zone. Well, in game one of the series, I thought it was a bad matchup, and then he played in game five against him because of the quality of his at-bats. He's been able to, to lay off pitches down in the zone, up in the zone. He's going the other way, and he's still 21, and a, couple more days. a couple more days. Uh, at that age, to play at this level, the way he's doing it is, is impressive. We saw it last year, and um, you know his season – Maybe up and down, but at the end he's 21, so he he learned a lot throughout. And you know, when I tell him you're not starting today, he's like, okay, I'm ready. You know, he knows that there's going to be an at bat probably later on in the game that he he he's going to be huge for us. And like in the in the championship series, he's going to be a very important part of what we do here in the World Series. Alex, we've heard you talk about it's going to take 25 guys to win the series, and and. Do you, when you're putting together your roster, do you ever think about what Dave did in 04 and 
look at a scenario and say, if things break this way, you know, this guy can be a hero, uh, a World Series hero for the rest of his life. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, Blake hasn't played, and he's still a huge part of what we're trying to accomplish. He can pinch run, he can pinch hit, he can come and catch and play first or play the outfield. Everybody has a role. It, it all depends where the games go, but uh, uh, I feel like on a nightly, on, every night somebody can step up and somebody can be that guy. You know, like, in my case, I only have one World Series at bat. It was a sack bunt. And Mikey then stole third, and then he scored on a sack fly. I mean, I feel great. You know, like, I, I didn't take one swing in the World Series, and I feel like I, I accomplished. You know, I, I was part of the equation. Bobby Kielty. I think he only took one swing in the World Series in 07. It was a home run. So they, they know, they understand everybody's all in. Um, everybody has a role, regardless if you're starting or if you don't even play, you know. You have to pay attention to the game. Even the guys that are not on the roster, you know, Brian Johnson and Pointer, was, they were looking at some stuff, you know. Take a look at that guy. Check the runner if he's relaying signs. Um, you know, if we fall into patterns, you know, so... Everybody's on board, everybody's all in, and everybody knows that when, when they have a chance, they, 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 they got a role and they can contribute. Alex, hablaste ya de lo agradecido que estás de la organización de los Dodgers. Quiero que me, que me, me, me comentes si del tiempo que jugaste con los Dodgers en la Liga Nacional hay algo que aprendiste que lo puedes aplicar ahora como dirigente. No, no, yo, yo creo que Ron... Ryan aquí, él, él dirige la Liga Nacional, así que tenemos una buena idea de, de lo que se hace. Ahora es sumamente diferente como se jugaba antes. No, no se toca con tanta frecuencia, no se corre con tanta frecuencia. Eh, es octubre, eh, cuando uno tiene oportunidad de batear por el pitcher, porque ahí hay tráfico en las bases, uno lo va a hacer. Así que lo que hay que estar pendiente es del double switch. No, 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 no. pensarlo bien y saber cuándo hacerlo, pero fuera de eso, sí, sí, es, la, es el mismo visual. ¿Algún comentario del hecho de que se enfrentan dos organizaciones tan históricas? No, es, es, es bueno para el béisbol, ¿sabes? Este, uno en el este, otro en el oeste, y, y franquicias que, que han hecho mucho en el deporte. Debe ser sumamente interesante para el fanático. Alex, now that you're in the World Series, you have to take more precautions than ever as far as regarding sign stealing and changing things up. I think the Dodgers had eight band scouts watching you guys in the uh, ALCS. We we always do, we always do. Yeah, we'll we'll play defense again. <laughs>